This is Philly Drone Tech with Tom Brunt. Sponsorship provided by AWeber.com, GetFlywheel.com, and Wistia.com. Hello folks, welcome to another episode of Philly Drone Tech here on the phillytech.org netcast network. I'm Tom Brunt. Uh, first, let me get uh, a little business out of the way. Um, as I reported on my last show, I understand that uh, some of you may be listening to this on an audio-only podcast network. Uh, well, I can tell you that this is a very visual medium. Uh, in fact, this show, I'm going to be doing a, a demo on a little uh, nano uh, quad that I have. So it would be, uh, you'd get a lot more out of it if you actually watch the video of the podcast as opposed to just listening to it. Just go to phillytech.org and you'll be able to look at it in all, and me in all its uh, video brilliance. Okay, so as I normally get started off with, let's, uh, let's talk about the FAA. Uh, I reported last uh, show that uh, they're now considering uh, a deadline of maybe, maybe 2017 for commercial drone rules and rules to adequately put UAVs, unmanned aerial vehicles, into, uh, into our airspace properly. Well, I uh, got this uh, story from an Indiana uh, TV uh, station website uh, where the FAA has told them that there is no date no date they have for it, um, which is, is pretty discouraging that they can't even give a date for it. Uh, let's, uh, let's hope that, uh, what, well, what I'm hoping for is that the Obama administration is able to kind of supersede this and maybe get something going sooner. Uh, we'll see how that all pans out uh, because, th as I've reported before, the FAA is only concerned about aircraft safety and uh, they don't really care about uh, any commercial implications or uh, potential industry uh, that brings in uh, a lot of money into the economy, uh, but the White House is. So the White House will be pushing on that because I believe they understand that uh, the longer we wait, uh, the harder it's going to be for this particular part of the industry to, pardon the pun again, take off. Uh, I reported last month that uh, uh, Amazon is, is getting so frustrated that they're considering moving their, uh, their um, overseas, their research on their own drone delivery system. So uh, look for a lot of others doing that uh, because of just this continued frustration. Meanwhile, it goes to say in the article uh, that uh, the FAA has been uh, trying to crack down on uh, illegal commercial drone use, which basically anything commercial, anything where you receive money for providing a service with a, a quadcopter or uh, a multirotor is, well, technically is illegal and they can fine you for it or send you a cease and desist. They have done this to, uh, according to this article, uh, to about 17 people. Now, if you do a quick uh, Google search for aerial drone photography or aerial drone services, you will find hundreds out there, um, probably dozens in your own area, for everything from real estate photography uh, to uh, doing uh, just aerials for commercials and, and TV shows to um, roof inspections. All of it technically is against the law, according to the FAA, but you find hundreds out there doing it. Um, as long as I think the people that are doing it responsibly and don't, uh, don't uh, cause the FAA to look at them, in other words, don't fly near an airport, uh, don't cause, uh, don't cause a, a, a mid-air collision, uh, don't, um, don't, don't crash, uh, in other words. Uh, you probably will stay under the radar. Hopefully the FAA won't uh, do the route that if you remember the recording industry did back in the early 2000s with uh, Napster and the digital music revolution. They, they went with the whack-a-mole approach. Let's just sue everybody doing it. 
Uh, that didn't work for the RAAA very much. It didn't discourage people at all from, from continuing to download music. Um, and I don't think it'll work for this as well. And all it will do is just be a big waste of time when they really should be coming up with sensible uh, regulation. And let's hope sensible regulation. Uh, the, the latest proposal of requiring a full pilot's license is just ridiculous. I don't think that's really going to happen, but they need to spend a lot of time wasted talking about uh, just that. So uh, that's that's it for this this uh, episode with the FAA. Uh, let me do some good uh, political news from a uh, a Senator Mark Warner, a Democrat uh, senator from Virginia, uh, has written the FAA this fantastic letter. Um, in my opinion, he gets it. And I really hope there's a lot of other uh, representatives that, that also get it as well. Uh, he starts off talking about how UAS can provide numerous potential public and private sector benefits from package delivery to precision agriculture to search and rescue operations. The industry is also the potential to make dramatic contributions in terms of economic development. Um, and. Uh, he goes on to talk about reports suggest that the FAA is considering requiring a full pilot license as a condition of operating UAS, even very small drones that bear little resemblance in their operations to traditional human piloted aircraft. A pilot's license can be expensive, costing as much as $10,000 to obtain, and has several uh, onus requirements including hours in the cockpit flying aircraft. Making this kind of requirement applicable to operations of small-scale UAS would be unnecessary and we serve to restrict development of an important industry here in the U.S. An entire industry is waiting for the FAA to provide a path forward for UAS integration into our nation's airspace by September 30, 2015, a deadline Congress put in place nearly three years ago. Unfortunately, a recent Inspector General report found the FAA will likely not meet this deadline. I strongly urge you to make this issue a top priority and put forth a reasonable and well-defined set of rules. Um, uh, good for him. Uh, thank you very much, Senator Warner. Um, uh, in fact, it has inspired me that I'm, I plan on writing a letter to my own uh, representative. Uh, that would be Representative uh, Fitzpatrick. Uh, in, in the Bucks and Montgomery County areas. And if you're very passionate about this too, and you are a drone, a drone pilot, uh, or would like to be, or you're interested in seeing how this, you know, this industry um, evolve, I urge you to write your uh, representative. Uh, the more they hear from us, the better. And uh, the more they hear from uh, responsible pilots that give uh, you know, reasonable arguments, the better. So when I get that letter done, I will post it on uh, my uh, Twitter uh, account and also talk about it in an upcoming episode. So uh, there we go with that. Um, my last story before we take a little sponsor break is the Consumer Electronics Show uh, just uh, happened in uh, Vegas. And uh, what is the big story uh, for the CES this year other than uh, 4K uh, television? It is drones 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 uh, I um, I'm still holding by my prediction that uh, 2015 is the year of the drone um, there is uh, again despite the fact that commercially uh, the FAA has poo-pooed any any use of drones the uh, market still seems to be uh, very poised in developing the technology and the CES uh, Consumer Electronics Show is just one example of uh, drones and quadcopters uh, in the uh, in the marketplace now. Okay, so with that, I'm going to take a quick uh, sponsor break and then when we get back, I'm going to show you uh, my little, uh, the little nano drone that I have, the little, uh, what I call him, Tiny Tim, there he is, a uh, little Cheerson CX-10 and I'm going to do a little flight demo of it. So I'll see you back in just a second. Today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at bullytech.org. Flywheel, a managed WordPress hosting platform built specifically for designers and creative agencies and helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. AWeber is local to the Philly region, helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. 
go to aweber.com slash phillytech to find out more. And by Soho Mail, professional, low-cost email with business class features and security. Next, let's uh, let's do a little product demo of one of my uh, one of my little drone uh, family members. Uh, let's do this time. We're going to do, uh, as I mentioned before the break, Tiny Tim. He has a little face on him. A lot harder to put the face on uh, something this small. But anyway, this is a uh, this is a. It comes from China. This is a uh, Cheerson CX10. And uh, well, I. Uh, while I was uh, out on the road, I did a, a little demo in a hotel room. Uh, put the GoPro on my head. Uh, so let's uh, let's just take a look at that, and then I'll go back and I'll tell you what's in the box and other things about it. So I'm out on the road, uh, staying at a hotel suite, and um, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you uh, the Cheerson. I often uh, fly them around the, the hotel when I'm bored and to keep my flying skills up. So uh, here he is, and uh, you see I have a face on him, and I call him Tiny Tim. So let's turn him on. Uh, in the back here, we'll put on the switch there, I'll put him down. Now on the controller, we'll turn on the controller. And now, just like some other uh, drones, so you have to bind it, the receiver, to, the, to the, the craft. So we flip it up, bring it down, and now he's ready to go. So let's take him up in the air. And as amazing as it seems, for something so ridiculously tiny, it's actually pretty agile. It flies pretty well. It's very responsive to the controls, almost too responsive. I've got to be very careful not to just jut it up in the air. But let's do a, uh, let's do a little flip here. Let's move him over here and hit the controller. There we go. There's a little flip. He flips in all directions. So let's do another one forward. There we go. All right, I'll bring him back here a little ways. Now he's got three flying modes. Uh, right now, as you see how I'm swishing him back and forth, and you see he doesn't like angle very far. This is the beginner mode. Uh, it's good uh, in like small places like this, like in hotels where you really can't go very far. But if you hit the left controller, you will get two other modes. I'll hit it again. There you go, and you heard two beeps. Let me bring them back up. Now you see how I've got much more agility out of them. And then I'll do uh, one more mode. That's the sport mode. Now you see there's plenty of agility there. You can do a lot of like fast moving back and forth, as you see as I'm doing here. But it's, you know, and you can do it in a small space, but uh, it's just a lot uh, tougher because you, you really want to have a little more room to do that. Uh, I believe the range is about 100 to 150 feet. I actually took this to an empty college uh, basketball arena, and I was able to take it all the way to the other end of the arena and not have it lose signal. Uh, if it does lose signal, uh, it'll do what most others do. It'll, uh, it'll turn itself off. Here, let's demonstrate that. I'll take it over the bed. And here, let's turn off the turn off the transmitter. Whoop! And there it goes. So that's better than uh, your other option, which would be that it would just fly away off into oblivion. Let me turn it back on, bind it back to the craft. And away it goes again. As you saw that it fell from quite a bit of a height there, even though it was on carpet. Um, very durable little guy. Uh, it's, it comes with four extra sets of propellers and they just simply pop on. Uh, I find that it can take uh, hits in the walls very well. Uh, it's very good at that. And the only thing I've seen is that occasionally a prop will get bent. And you'll figure that out because suddenly the craft will want to lean to one side or not want to take off at all. And, and uh, or turn over on itself, that means you've got a bent prop. Uh, but uh, again, for 21 to $25, uh, it's, it's amazing. And 
you know, it's good to, uh, like I said, I use it in the hotel just to uh, kind of keep my flying skills up. Uh, it's, it's, you know, have a little bit more fine control, and it's just, it's kind of fun to show people. I find people are just as fascinated about this as they are the bigger uh, Phantom that I have, uh, just because it is just so ridiculously tiny. And you get like a couple of minutes, only I'd say maybe about seven minutes out of it uh, before it uh, needs a charge. But the good thing is it charges within like 10 to 15 minutes. So you're, uh, you're back up and running rather quickly. So let me, uh, let me let it run down here. Oh, it's running down. You see it's flashing. So here, we'll see what happens as it runs down. Now it's running down. And... And see, it kind of decelerates and then eventually turns itself off. And Flash is telling me I have to uh, uh, recharge. So anyway, there you have it. Like I said, the Cheerson CX-10. Great little guy. Well, there you have it. There's, uh, there's how the little guy flies. Um, one thing is I, I kind of put some text there to uh, kind of uh, change a little bit what I said about uh, the battery life. Uh, it's probably closer to the way you would fly it, anywhere between three and five minutes. It depends on whether it's in sport mode, how many times you flip it, and if you're in like a wind where it's really got to struggle. You could be anywhere between three and five minutes. But it still takes just only an average of 10 to 15 minutes for a full charge, which isn't bad at all. So let's talk about what's in the box. Well, uh, it's a rather small box. So it's a, there's what it comes in. So mine came via regular mail and just, they just shoved it in the mailbox. So you get your, uh, you get your quad here with the four propellers already on it. Uh, the propellers just pop off and push back on. Uh, you got your little controller here, uh, two AAA batteries. Uh, you've got, uh, well, your power and your little uh, your little gain trims. So just like uh, other quads, you can uh, if it's kind of hovering like toward the left, you can kind of trim it back and 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 kind of straighten it up a little bit. Uh, that, so that comes with it. Um, this is the charging cable. It does not come with a charger. It's meant to uh, go USB into your computer, or I just use a phone charger. Any phone charger will do. I would recommend a, a standard 10 watt, a one amp phone charger, uh, not, a ta not a tablet uh, like an iPad uh, charger because those are just a little stronger and uh, it might cut down on the battery life a bit with uh, it's such a small battery to have uh, that much of a charge in it. So just USB and then the little connector goes right into the, uh, right into the back there. And then there you go. Uh, it also comes with an extra set of propellers. You see, I've used a bunch of mine already, so it comes with four of them. And again, they just pop off and push back on. Um, and uh, it also has the uh, user manual in English, and it's actually, it's actually pretty good, and, and uh, will tell you everything you need to know about the different modes and all that. Uh, what else you can get with it is uh, you can get these separately off of uh, Amazon, uh, or probably eBay, uh, there are also um, little prop guards. Cute little prop guards you can put on the thing. I haven't had much luck with them because they kind of squeeze on under where the motor is and it just seems to bind the motor up. But I've heard other people have bought them and used them successfully. They're typically, if they're letting like uh, little kids in the house uh, play with it, uh, it is they are still propellers, although I've had I've had the thing run into me and it doesn't really hurt. But if you had little kids, you might want to uh, consider getting prop guards for this. It doesn't mark up the walls or anything. They're just little tiny uh, plastic uh, propellers. Um, and also that kit with the prop guards will uh, come with another extra set of props included, including two red ones that you could put to face the uh, front of the craft. Uh, so uh, there we go. And that's really about it. That's all that comes in the box. Uh, it, you can get it in multiple colors. And I would recommend, um, just, like, just like most of the really good like uh, Chinese products, uh, quadcopters out there, they're all Chinese companies and don't really have a lot of U.S. distribution. So even on Amazon, uh, you can buy it on Amazon. It may take three weeks or more to get uh, unless you can find, make sure you're actually getting it from a U.S. supplier. 
of the Cheerson, I found better luck going to an eBay store that had numerous numerous uh, US suppliers where you, I got it in just a couple of days as opposed to waiting weeks and weeks. So uh, keep that in mind as you're looking for some of these quads. Uh, they, they may come directly from China and uh, if you're like me, you, you move it, waiting a month is, is no good. So um, just, just look out for that. Like I said, you can find them on Amazon. Uh, I got this off of an eBay store and it was like, I think it was a company in Texas that sold them and I got it in like a number of days. So uh, just uh, look out for that. But, but uh, again, as far as a little tiny uh, guy to play around with, uh, I recommend it. It's a great, great little thing. And it's, it's kind of amazing, again, uh, the size of it, that it flies as well as it does. It flies like any old quad. So now uh, I'll have one more story uh, to show you, a little, uh, little interesting one here. This is a, uh, a video that I saw online of uh, lions attacking a drone. Yes, lions. <laughs> Judging by the video, it looks like it was a, uh, a rather uh, early, uh, early experienced pilot. Uh, the fact that they, they almost died bombed the lions and then they went right into a tree. But uh, the lions are the ones that got the revenge in the end. Uh, this video goes on for several minutes and the lions, they, uh, uh, the quote like a movie line, they went medieval on it. Uh, they did not leave this thing alone for minutes and minutes and minutes at a time. So, but also let that be a lesson that it's not good. I've seen other videos like this. It is not good to fly low over uh, farm animals. Uh, it, it will freak them out. And if you have a mishap like this, you can either hurt the animal or, uh, well, hurt your craft in this case. Uh, I can only imagine being these people uh, just sitting there watching this thing get chomped on and chomped on and there's nothing really you can do about it. So that's about all I have for you for this episode. So uh, again, if you uh, have anything you'd like to hear me talk about or you have any questions, uh, leave them in like the comments of wherever you're watching this, whether it's YouTube or phillytech.org. Uh, or you can uh, also follow me at my Twitter account at DroneGuyTom. And uh, I also have email, that's uh, DroneGuy at tebweb.com. That's T-E-B-W-E-B.com. And I hope to, as I've said in the past, I hope to expand this uh, show this year and start talking to uh, people, other people that are uh, experts in the field and that are involved with drone technology. So I hope to uh, get to that soon. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.